Item number SCP-412 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-412 is currently contained within Storage Unit 11 at Site 19. Removal of the item requires authorization by no fewer than three personnel with Level 3 clearance and may be vetoed by Site Security. Gloves should be worn when handling SCP-412, and the item should be transported in an opaque container. Staff interaction must be carried out with full observance of Hazmat Protocol 7R. Any and all staff making physical contact with or direct observation of SCP-412 will submit to a full physical examination. Anyone found to exhibit physical alteration will be remanded immediately to quarantine. Description SCP-412 is an antique silver hand mirror, measuring 18 centimeters by 7 centimeters. The mirror has a 4 centimeter crack in the top left hand corner and has an etched motif of roses and vines. Around percent of subjects within direct line of sight of SCP-412 report a compulsion to pick up the item and view their reflection in it. There does not appear to be a discernible pattern to the selections. Testing for possible genetic, mental, or other selection markers is ongoing. Simultaneous observation and contact with SCP-412 causes the item to connect with the subject, regardless of whether they have been coerced into doing so by SCP-412. Tests using restrained subjects have shown that both actions, touching and viewing the reflection, are necessary for a connection to be made. No means of severing this connection have been found, short of complete isolation for a period of no less than two years. Connected subjects are compelled to repeatedly view their reflection in SCP-412, initially only once or twice a day. Viewing frequency increases over a period of several weeks. By around day 55, the amount of time subjects spend viewing their reflection typically begins to exceed all other activities, including sleep. Each viewing causes biological alterations to the subject, beginning with minor physiological changes such as enlarged lymph nodes, facial rash, or skin discoloration. Although the exact pattern differs between subjects, by day 90, almost all subjects show downward extension of the rib cage, fixed open jaw by way of large cysts towards the rear of the mouth, and severely compromised reproductive and immune systems. Subjects also show a continual loss of memory recall ability and emotional response. FMRI scans have shown a marked decrease in activity in subjects' amygdala and parietal lobes. Interviews have shown that subjects appear to have an obsession with an other for whom they are being made ready. Subjects who survive to the advanced stages of alteration begin to exhibit marked changes in behavior and more drastic physical alterations. These include the reorganization of internal organs, leading to the creation of a small empty area inside the chest, increased mucus production, and changes in hormone production and data expunged. Autopsies on advanced stage subjects have shown that the cavity could theoretically support a separate life form. This led researchers to speculate that the alterations caused by SCP-412 intend to turn the human body into an environment suit for a life form unaccustomed to Earth's atmosphere. Authorized personnel should refer to Addendum 4122 for further details. Addendum 4121 Circumstances of Retrieval SCP-412 came to the attention of the Foundation following five unexplained deaths and matching the pattern described above. Three of the deceased owned a hand mirror of a similar age. The design varied considerably. Only one mirror had reasonably intact glass. Once it had been established that the mirror was responsible for the mutations, it was taken into Foundation custody. The remains of the other two mirrors showed no unusual properties and were disposed of. Testing and observation has led researchers to theorize that SCP-412 is not the mirror itself, but is in fact an outside force 
that anchors to mirrors. This theory is unproven, but any mirrors suspected of exhibiting similar behavior must be acquired and contained. Addendum 4122 Event 412A On date expunged Subject D56653 201 days after initial connection to SCP-412 ceased viewing his reflection and sat calmly in the corner of the quarantine room. Three hours later, the subject began convulsing and clutching his chest. This continued for three minutes, after which time the subject lay immobile, apparently deceased. Once death had been confirmed, subject's corpse was taken for analysis. Pathologists found a small 8cm vaguely humanoid within the artificial chest cavity. Organism had connected to the subject's blood supply and nervous system, and had begun to extend tendrils upward, puncturing the subject's trachea. Cells in the top 5 centimeters of tendrils showed similarity to those in the optic organs of copepods, although with a much more complex structure. The origin of the organism and its cause of death are currently unknown. Item Number SCP-430 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-430 is to be kept in a humanoid containment cell on Site-17, placed on a wooden pallet or equivalent loose support at least 20 centimeters above ground to prevent rusting. The cell containing SCP-430 is to be fitted with an adjustable table, a sand basin, a controllable two-position hook conveyor system, and a master-slave control system, as specified in Document 430 Gamma Construction Details. One cell adjacent to SCP-430 is to house a live D-Class subject, designated SCP-430-C whose suitability was ensured by enacting Protocol Prometheus-11 prior to their internment. SCP-430-C is to be treated in accordance with Foundation Humanoid Containment Guidelines Section NP-1. Suitable SCP-430-C candidates are non-violent, introverted, and capable of carrying out simple tasks without supervision, with claustrophobia being a disqualifying factor. Other cells adjacent to SCP-430 containment are to be designated long-term low-value item storage. The set of cells adjacent to SCP-430 is designated SCP-433. While SCP-430 contains a living subject, designated SCP-432, such SCP-432 is to be treated in accordance with Foundation Humanoid Containment Guidelines, Section NP-5, except as following. Routine medical examinations of SCP-432 are to take place weekly, rather than monthly. SCP-432 is to be fitted with a heart rate monitor. Due to restricted movement, SCP-432 is to be fed an individualized diet, as per recommendations of a qualified member of Site-17 medical staff. SCP-432 is to be administered daily doses of aspirin to prevent vein thrombosis. SCP-432 is to be encouraged to perform light exercise within the limits of SCP-430's allowance. While no Foundation staff is present in the containment cell, SCP-432 is to have control of the table position, the lighting, and the hook conveyor system by means of the slave controller, unless deemed otherwise by staff of clearance 1430 or higher. This controller is to be disabled from the main control panel prior to staff entering SCP-430 containment. SCP-432 is to be explained the functioning of the controls, and be ordered to transport their cell above the sand basin prior to urination or defecation. The sand basin is to be cleaned daily. In the case of SCP-432 expiring, as represented by the lack of signal from SCP-432 heart rate monitor, Coupled with visual confirmation, no personnel is to enter SCP-433 until visual feed confirms the presence of former SCP-430-C inside SCP-430. Subsequently, the remains of previous SCP-432 are to be removed from SCP-430 and the new SCP-432 briefed. Protocol Prometheus-11 
Prior to being classified SCP-430-C, chosen D-Class personnel is to sign a printed copy of the following document. Note, following Incident 431, personnel are to ensure SCP-430-C has signed the document with their own name. Researcher Eisenberg, I hereby of my own will declare that I reject the divine mandate of our monarch, holding them to no more esteem than the lowest of peasants, for all men were born equal, and that I support, and urge my countrymen to rise against feudal tyranny, and fight for freedom, brotherhood, and equality. Undersigned. Description. SCP-430 is a cylindrical gibbet, approximately 3 meters tall and 0.7 meters in diameter, weighing CA-800 kilograms, composed of an unknown material. SCP-430 resists attempts to obtain bulk material samples, and attempts at indentation testing resulted in hardness values inconsistent with other properties. Vickers indentation test resulted in measured hardness values between 18 to 35 HV5, while subsequent attempt at sampling showed the bulk material being capable of causing significant abrasive wear of the diamond-coated cutting disc. Samples of surface corrosion are obtainable, and are chemically identical to hydrated ferrous oxide. On the lower rim, the numeral 1772 and name Hans Dreschler are carved. While SCP-430 is occupied by a living individual, designated SCP-432, it persists in a passive state. SCP-432 can interact with their environment outside SCP-430, subject to the imposed physical constraints. Even if feasible for their size and dexterity, SCP-432 will deny having the ability to exit SCP-430. If forced to exit, SCP-432 shows signs of mental distress and reappears within SCP-430 within three hours of removal. SCP-432 shows no other anomalous properties or traits. Individuals within direct sight range of SCP-430 form false memories consisting of alleged reason for SCP-432's presence within SCP-430 in the form of a transgression SCP-432 has committed. The memories are consistent among test subjects. When SCP-432 expires, SCP-430 enters active state. During active state, SCP-430 attempts to locate a suitable individual in its vicinity, with a radius of effect expanding by CA 10 meters an hour, with unknown upper limit. Testing aborted after radius of effect exceeded 300 meters. A suitable individual Defined as one who has transgressed against laws and regulations of the Royal City of City Council, valid during the period of 1766 to 1780, and who is within the effective range, will be instantaneously transported into SCP-430 through an unknown mechanism, becoming the next SCP-432. SCP-430 appears to show strong preference for individuals who have committed crimes against church or feudal authority such as blasphemy, treason, and poaching. Recovery Log SCP-430 was recovered from Western Germany, following a police raid on a compound owned by members of Dyson von Magdalena, or Sons of Magdalene, as a result of witness reports detailing Hans, a member of the task force, appearing inside SCP-430 after attempting to aid its previous occupant, who was wounded in the firefight and subsequently expired. A modified report detailing his death during the operation was published, and members of the task force were administered Class A amnestics. Addendum 431 Sons of Magdalene A fringe Christian sect led by a Johann Members of Sons of Magdalene venerated SCP-430 as a living manifestation of God's judgment and considered SCP-432 holy martyrs, usually providing them with drinking water, honey, and insects, as a reflection of the fasting of St. John the Baptist. In its original location, SCP-430 hung from the roof, behind the altar of the compound's church, with a sheet of worked sheepskin with the following inscription covering its lower half. 
For Mary Magdalene was sinful, but she knew of her sin, and repented in the face of our Lord, and was thus blessed. And the scribes and Pharisees who brought her forth and willed to stone her, knew of her sin. But they were sinful, and did not know of their own sin, and thus were damned. And Lord Jesus said to them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And blessed were the men and women, for they learned of their sin, for they have walked the path of salvation. Addendum 432 Incident 431 On date expunged, SCP-430-C failed to appear with an SCP-430 following expiry of then-current SCP-432, even after one hour since event. 153 minutes after event, researcher A. Novikov disappeared from his office, becoming the next SCP-432, with observers citing charges of sedition and less majesty. When interrogated, SCP-430-C admitted to signing the document with researcher A. Novikov's name, claiming to have overheard it from security personnel, and citing, I never signed shit with my own name, and not gonna start now, as a reason. Examination of the signed sheet confirmed this finding. SCP-430-C was terminated on disciplinary charges. Researcher A. Novikov was provided with a computer and continued his work until death. Item Number SCP-445 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures Access to and testing of SCP-445 must be approved by staff with Level 2 security clearance or higher, and each request must include a list of tests to be carried out. Any testing must be done with the accompaniment of no less than two guards for the entirety of testing. Any deviation from the pre-approved list of tests will result in immediate termination of testing and a severe reprimand. Addendum As of 6 2000 SCP-445 is to be kept permanently separated from all samples of SCP-445 Alpha as described in Isolation Protocol IP-445-1. The access and testing regulations given above for SCP-445 apply equally to SCP-445 Alpha. Description SCP-445 consists of three stacks of white 11-inch by 17-inch paper. Each individual leaf has the text, Dr. Wondertainment's Super Paper, stamped on the bottom left corner. While in its natural state, SCP-445 cannot be torn or burned, water has no adverse effect on it, and glue or tape will not stick to SCP-445. Observation of SCP-445 has found that its fibers are much denser than normal paper fibers, at 3,000 kilograms a cubic meter, and a microlayer of an unidentifiable substance is coated on each individual fiber. When SCP-445 is folded into a representation of an object, SCP-445 takes on the qualities of the object in question. While in its folded state, SCP-445 can only be unfolded into its original state by the person who originally folded it. SCP-445 can also be rolled, and it will stick to itself if slight pressure is applied. Drawing on SCP-445 does not produce any unusual effect with the exception of any details illustrated for folded or rolled objects. A variant of SCP-445, designated SCP-445-Alpha, was created on 6 2000 via exposure of SCP-445 samples to SCP-73. Physically, SCP-445-Alpha is almost identical to SCP-445, the only difference being a slight reddish tint to SCP-445-Alpha. However, SCP-445-Alpha behaves differently to SCP-445 when folded. Addendum 1015 Dr. Testing Log Folded into A paper tube When observed through one of the open ends, SCP-445 acted as a handheld telescope, enhancing the view of objects within a 25-foot distance. Folded into a Christmas tree, remained stable when stood upright. When green and red lights were drawn onto the tree, they lit up, 
despite the lack of a physical light source. Folded into a small knife, became very sturdy and sharp, giving several researchers paper cuts when attempting to hold it, able to hold its own against actual metal weaponry. Folded into a conical paper tube, acted as a megaphone, though amplified only the folder's voice. When a volume control was drawn onto the side, the folder was able to change the volume of the megaphone. Folded into a paper cup, became very rigid, able to hold extremely hot or volatile liquids without any sign of tearing or melting. Folded into a paper crane, became animate, much like SCP-368, though much slower and easily catchable. Recommended research into a possible connection between the two. Folded into a paper boat slash hat. When placed in water, became self-propelling at speeds of up to 60 kilometers an hour. When inverted and placed on head, subject's physical attractiveness was greatly increased in the eyes of viewers. When both were performed simultaneously, both effects were achieved, with subject reported as looking dead sexy while scooting around the water upside down. Folded into a crumpled wad of paper, data expunged, leaving three D-Class personnel dead. Testing session ended. Folded into origami copy of SCP-682, animated halfway through folding process, causing Dr. G considerable injury. Testing session ended. Notes. Let's not try that again. Dr. G. Addendum. 6. 2000. Dr. S. has requested permission to test samples of SCP-445 in conjunction with SCP-85. He has also requested permission to expose samples of SCP-445 to SCP-73 to determine whether SCP-73's ability to destroy ordinary paper by touch extends to SCP-445. Document 445-1. 6. 2000 Approval for testing SCP-445 in conjunction with SCP-73 granted. SCP-73 is placed in a room with one sheet of SCP-445 and instructed to touch the paper. SCP-445 sample exhibits no loss of structural integrity upon contact with SCP-73. However, the sample does change color exhibiting a slightly reddish tinge within approximately 30 seconds of initial contact with SCP-73. Modified SCP-445 sample designated SCP-445-Alpha. Dr. S. recommends further investigation into physical and chemical composition of SCP-445. SCP-445-Alpha stored in separate isolation chamber to prevent potential cross-contamination. 6. 2000 one sheet of SCP-445 introduced to SCP-445-Alpha. SCP-445 sample begins exhibiting visible coloration consistent with SCP-445-Alpha within 90 seconds of initial contact. After approximately 600 seconds of contact, introduced sample of SCP-445 is physically indistinguishable from SCP-445-Alpha. Formal Isolation Protocol IP-445-1 established to prevent cross-contamination between SCP-445 and SCP-445-Alpha. 07. 2000. Eight sheets of SCP-445 introduced to SCP-445-Alpha. Conversion occurs as before, bringing total number of SCP-445-Alpha sheets to 10. Dr. S begins testing on SCP-445-Alpha following the experimental protocol utilized on 1015 by doctors and G. Folded into a paper tube. When observed through one of the open ends, SCP-445-Alpha acted as a handheld telescope, enhancing the view of objects within a 25-foot distance. However, subject using the telescope reported that objects viewed through it seemed somehow off. When asked to elaborate, Subject was unable to specify any specific visual issue, noting only that objects viewed through the telescope appeared sinister. Folded into a Christmas tree, remained stable when stood upright. When green and red lights were drawn onto the tree, they lit up, despite the lack of a physical light source. 
Test results identical to those of SCP-445. Folded into a small knife. Became very sturdy and sharp, causing injuries to all subjects who attempted to pick it up, ultimately severing Subject D's right index finger at the proximal interphalangeal joint. Eventually, Subject using reinforced gloves was able to unfold SCP-445 Alpha sample into its original neutral shape. Folded into a conical paper tube, acted as a megaphone, though amplified only the folder's voice. The amplified voice was subject to significant distortion, exhibiting what was described as a demonic growl by observers. Though in all cases the speaker's voice was still identifiable, when a volume control was drawn onto the side, the folder was able to change the volume of the megaphone. Folded into a paper cup, became very rigid, able to hold extremely hot or volatile liquids without any sign of tearing or melting. However, samples of water added to the cup became opaque and dark red in color within 15 seconds of contact. Chemical analysis of the resulting fluid revealed it to contain large quantities of human hemoglobin and other blood proteins. No other liquid added to the cup exhibited this change, including water-based solutions in concentrations higher than 50 mm. Folded into a paper crane became animate, much like SCP-368. Sample displayed aggressive and territorial behavior, repeatedly dive-bombing researchers and attacking with its beak and wings, causing minor injuries. After being caught and killed by crushing the paper crane, Sample was able to be unfolded into its original neutral shape, folded into a paper boat slash hat. When placed in water, became self-propelling at speeds of up to 60 kilometers an hour. Again, Sample displayed aggressive behavior, repeatedly attempting to ram nearby subjects and even propelling itself out of the water to do so. When inverted and placed on head, subject began to act erratically, threatening researchers and security personnel with violence. Subject terminated. In light of these results, Dr. S elects to suspend for their testing on SCP-445 Alpha. SCP-73 declines to comment when questioned on these findings. Note: In light of these findings, I would like to formally request that SCP-445 be reclassified as a Euclid class object. Dr. S. Item number: SCP-449. Object class: Euclid. Special Containment Procedures All instances of SCP-449 are to be stored in a standard containment vault outside of testing. To minimize additional production, between 3 and 5 kilograms of SCP-449-A will be available for testing in a low-risk chemical storage container. Excess SCP-449-A generated in testing of SCP-449 must be incinerated. A network of D-Class spaced no closer than 1,500 kilometers apart are to consume one grain of SCP-449-A per day to monitor for use of SCP-449. Should use by parties other than the Foundation be detected, agents are to follow the Dragnet procedure outlined in Document 4495 to locate and confiscate the SCP-449 instance. Description each instance of SCP-449 is a twisting aluminum cone, loosely resembling a cornucopia. Each is 40 centimeters long with a mouth approximately 15 centimeters in diameter, weighing slightly more than a kilogram. On the side of each is stamped the word JOY. For unknown reasons, all instances tarnish very easily. When squeezed by a human, SCP-449 instances produce SCP-449-A. The user may control the rate of production by thought, ranging from single grains to about 6 liters per second. SCP-449-A is a clear, crystalline substance resembling sand in texture. It may be shaped, crushed, or dissolved in water or alcohol, though not in bodily fluids other than blood. It is odorless and tasteless. Eating large quantities of SCP-449-A may cause erosion of tooth enamel, damage to the elementary lining, and diarrhea or vomiting, consistent with the consumption of other abrasive substances. 
If consumed in any quantity, it causes the consumer to enter a stage of extreme pleasure and euphoria for up to a day, as long as it remains within the digestive tract. This effect is not modulated by dosage and takes effect immediately. SCP-449-A is neither digested nor externally damaged by its passage through the alimentary canal, though when excreted or removed through other means, it no longer exhibits anomalous properties. The euphoric effects of SCP-449-A cease immediately if any person within approximately 1300 kilometers has more SCP-449-A by mass within their digestive tract. To date, all individuals SCP-449 instances have been recovered from had gone to extreme lengths to retain the effects of SCP-449-A, including killing at least four other users of SCP-449, permanently residing in a boat far away from any population centers, undergoing radical gastric surgery to add an additional estimated three cubic meters to their digestive tract. In almost all cases, the SCP-449 users had abandoned activities other than producing and consuming SCP-449-A. To date, 83 instances have been recovered, out of an estimated 100. Addendum 449-2 Several SCP-449 instances were accompanied by the following note. Joy from the factory. Any will let you have joy. Interferes within 761 miles. Very unfortunate, regrettable, apologies, etc. Happy way for you to be one to feel joy. Joy, joy, joy. Better than joy. As much joy as you like. How much joy to have joy, how much to have sorrow without joy. You cooperate, you defect, you organize, you destroy. You use. Factory only provides. Item number. SCP-539. Object Class. Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-539 is to be kept in a padded case, to remain locked at all times, unless a supervisor with a minimum security clearance level of 2 is present to observe, and only during potential testing of its phenomena. Physical contact with SCP-539 is forbidden, unless approved testing is being conducted. Description Object is a thin, round disk, composed of an undetermined material. While there appears to be corrosion around the edges, testing has determined that the marks are not the result of oxidation. When thrown, an event will occur in the immediate vicinity that will draw attention away from its thrower. These distractions have no observable pattern of any sort. However, it has been determined that the distraction will be more overwhelming in proportion to the difficulty of removing attention from the user. Due to the unpredictable nature of SCP-539's effect, testers are currently advised to throw it as far as possible from themselves. Addendum Test Notes Test 539-1 Security personnel ordered to line up all with clear lines of sight on tester with instructions to not break eye contact with Tester under any circumstances. When the disc was thrown, the security personnel experienced a sudden wardrobe existence failure, causing all of them to lose eye contact with the Tester, being more concerned with the loss of clothing and the issue of the climate being rather uncomfortable to a nude security guard. Test 539-2 Tester was dressed in bright and eye-catching clothing for this test. Tester was alone with security personnel in an empty office. Security personnel ordered to maintain constant eye contact with Tester. When the disc was thrown, the entire building's fire alarm triggered and could not be turned off until the disc was retrieved and the computer security system reset. Test 539-3 Class D personnel given instructions to attract the attention of the local authorities, then make use of the SCP. Personnel chased by police after smashing in a law cruiser's window. When thrown, a large animal of the species, Carcharinus lucus, bull shark, appeared in the way of the pursuing police cars, which were forced to stop and investigate. After Class D personnel were debriefed, both the shark and the SCP were retrieved by field agents. 
It is worth noting that the police officers involved have remained firmly silent to their superiors about the incident. Test 539-4 This test was unauthorized, and disciplinary action of varying degrees of severity has been taken with the parties involved. As a prank, a group of research staff decided to see if they could distract Dr. who is notorious for becoming very involved in his work. When thrown, a pack of at least ten Varanus Komodoensis, Komodo dragons, burst from the ceiling vent and proceeded to chase the doctor out of his lab. The reptiles proceeded to run unchecked throughout the facility until the disc was picked up, after which they were impossible to locate and had apparently left the premises. This test may indicate that use of animals is the predominant method of distraction. Look, I appreciate a good laugh as much as anyone, but perhaps this could have ended better if the research staff had gotten… permission? Furthermore, I find it highly likely that the method of distraction will involve animals, given the way that they almost always attract the attention of humans. Dr. Test 539-5 Test to determine object's effectiveness on proxy observers. Testing personnel set up an observation camera linked to a computer monitor in a different building. The computer would both record and display the video feed to observers. Camera was focused on test subject, and the remaining personnel moved to the monitoring computer. When the disk was thrown, the computer suffered a fatal error, caused by the deletion of the hardware drivers needed to use the camera feed. Recorded video was corrupt and beyond recovery. Item Number SCP-568 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-568 requires no unique considerations and is stored in Storage Locker 28-002 in Sector 28. Testing with SCP-568 must be authorized by Level 3 personnel. Description SCP-568 has the appearance of a flexible white strap, 70 by 8 by 0.2 centimeters. An unbroken seam on one side runs down its length, precisely along the center. The other side of SCP-568 is smooth and identical in texture to the seam side. The material SCP-568 is made of is unknown, with some similarities to leather. When the smooth side comes into contact with the seamed side, the two surfaces will adhere firmly to each other, as if glued. The surfaces can be peeled apart with moderate effort and no damage to SCP-568. When SCP-568 is wrapped around an object, with both ends overlapping at a minimum of one centimeter, the object may be split along the seam. To bisect the object, one half must be twisted counterclockwise one half turn, as if loosening a screw. The surface of the cut does not display a cross section of the object, only an impermeable white surface. To reassemble the object, the cut ends must be in contact and twisted clockwise one half turn. SCP-568 cannot be removed when split in this fashion. Experiment Log Number 568-1 Tests conducted by Dr. Weiss and J. Candle Dated 2000 Item One steel rod Result Item bisected and reassembled with no observable damage. Item one steel rod. Result. Item bisected and reassembled, one half at 180 degrees. The bisected area joined seamlessly. Interestingly, SCP-568 could be removed even when both halves ended up misaligned in this experiment. Item. Two steel rods. Result. SCP-568 wrapped around both items. Care taken not to leave air pockets in the edges. Bisection failed. SCP-568 removed. Item. Two steel rectangular prisms. Result. SCP-568 wrapped around both items. Bisection failed. SCP-568 removed. Item. One glass container filled with water. Result. Item bisected and the lid removed. The white surface on the bisected region was not visible when one looked through the cylinder. Instead, 
One saw whatever the other half of the cylinder was pointing towards. Tilting either half showed water draining out of the container. Similarly, refilling the container showed a stream of water entering the bottom half. Item reassembled. Application of SCP-568 as a portal window under consideration. Item. One hollow plastic container. Result. Item bisected. When placed through the cylinder, objects, including water, a steel rod, a HB pencil, Dr. Weiss's arm, and a glass marble were observed to smoothly pass through. Item reassembled. Item. Subject D-1617. Result. SCP-568 wrapped around D-1617's lower left arm and bisected. Subject reported no pain and was fully capable of manipulating his hand, even from a distance of 20 meters. Subject's arm reassembled. Item. Subject D-1618. Result. SCP-568 wrapped around D-1618's lower left arm and bisected. Subject's arm reassembled at 180 degrees. When SCP-568 was removed, the subject lost all sensation in his hand and complained of a sharp stinging in the bisected area. While the subject's arm had reattached seamlessly, deep bruising quickly developed under the skin. Pain rapidly increased until the subject had to be sedated. Close examination of the subject's arm showed the blood vessels and nerve endings no longer met and it was effectively cut off from the rest of the body. D-1618 terminated. Item number. SCP-581. Object Class. Safe. Special Containment Procedures. Except for approved testing, SCP-581 must be kept a minimum of 1,000 meters from all members of all equine species. SCP-581 is to be kept in locked, climate-controlled facilities. No firearms are allowed in proximity to any examples of SCP-581-2. Description SCP-581 is a horse's nose bag, made from leather. Any equine subjects, horses, mules, and donkeys have all been confirmed to be susceptible. Zebras, onagers, and other non-domesticated hybrids have not been tested due to budgetary reasons. Within 500 meters is potentially an instance of SCP-581-1. SCP-581-1's sole motivation appears to be inserting its muzzle within SCP-581. This is strong enough to override instinctual reactions to predator urine, or females in heat, and has caused instances of SCP-581-1 to harm themselves in the process of attempting to free SCP-581 from within steel safes. Only one instance of SCP-581-1 is known to exist at any time. Examples of SCP-581-1 will actively resist being removed from SCP-581's range of effect, and will sicken and 90% die within a week of SCP-581 being forcibly removed. If SCP-581-1 succeeds in inserting its muzzle within SCP-581, it will become an example of SCP-581-2. SCP-581-2 is an equine characterized by several anomalous behaviors. These behaviors seem to indicate that SCP-581-2 believes itself to be a human. Observed anomalous human-like behaviors include Attempts to walk on its hind legs Attempts to attack its head with its front hooves. Attempts to enter the driver's seat of unoccupied vehicles. Fascination by, and then hostility towards, reflective surfaces. Attempts to clasp firearms with its front hooves. Extended periods of aberrant modulated vocalizations. These are believed to be SCP-581-2's attempts to speak. Data expunged. To date, all specimens of SCP-581-2 have been euthanized due to multiple limb fractures. No specimen has survived longer than two hours. Item Number SCP-595 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-595 is currently stored in either enclosed Dry Dock 2 
Virginia, or a secure foundation warehouse district in Philadelphia, depending on SCP-595's current state. Both sites are restricted without Level 3 access clearance or higher. Access to SCP-595's interior is restricted to specially selected Class D personnel or mobile task forces, with approval from either site's local administration. Due to the nature of SCP-595's effects, it is imperative that no personnel or sensitive equipment be located within the storage sites after SCP-595 has been dormant for over two hours. Normal research activities may resume at one of the two sites after SCP-595's documented effects have subsided. Description SCP-595 is a Canon-class destroyer escort, DE USS commissioned by the United States Navy in late 1942. It is no different from any other vessel of its class, with the exception of several munitions magazines filled with data expunged of unknown manufacture. These devices cause the vessel and a limited surrounding area to be permeated with abnormally high levels of electromagnetic radiation. Periodically, the devices induce a tremendous spike in the amount of electromagnetic radiation, resulting in effects outlined in Document 595-1. While these spikes are mostly regular in their timing, they can result in severe damage to surrounding equipment and personnel if safety precautions are not strictly adhered to. The ship is tied to reports of a secret U.S. Navy experiment, Project Philadelphia, purportedly investigating principles of teleportation and possibilities of camouflaging naval vessels by bending light around them, rendering them invisible to the naked eye. The failure of the experiment resulted in the loss of nearly the entire crew. As they were unable to contain it, the U.S. Navy agreed to turn SCP-595 over to the Foundation for further study. Unfortunately, information relating to the experiment has been made public. Cover-up efforts are detailed in an addendum below. Document number 595-1 SCP-595 self-contained devices are known to cause varying spikes in radiation levels at regular intervals approximately every three to four hours. When the Foundation acquired SCP-595 from the United States Navy, little was known of the device's side effects as the Navy had already destroyed almost all relevant documentation. As such, testing commenced in earnest, producing the following known results. The foremost effect of SCP-595's tremendous levels of electromagnetic radiation is that the ship can exist in one of two locations, varying randomly and requiring two teams of researchers to fully monitor SCP-595. The vessel has been observed with lower bursts, to appear translucent and in some cases almost completely transparent to the naked eye, while remaining in place at its current dry dock. Any personnel located on or within a radius of meters of the vessel while it is undergoing a radiation burst can be subjected to the following effects. Personnel not located aboard the ship, but still within its area of effect, display effects similar to that of SCP-595 itself, sometimes reappearing in place, but sometimes showing up at the other secure facility. There have also been occasions where these personnel have disappeared completely and did not reappear in any Foundation-controlled sector. An incident of this nature occurring in 19 resulted in the loss of U.S. Navy personnel, prompting the current containment agreement. Persons in physical contact either on deck or inside, with SCP-595, are subject to the effects listed above, but with markedly increased danger. These properties were discovered when Agent was trapped on the ship, faded out of sight, and, upon returning, was fused to the bulkhead he had been standing near. Inspections showed a perfect molecular bond of tissue to metal, cleanly severing the entire lower portion of the agent's abdomen which protruded from the opposite side of the bulkhead. When questioned, the agent reported feeling no pain, but was unable to move his lower extremities and exhibited signs of extreme nausea and early stages of acute radiation poisoning. 
Attempts to recover the surviving portion of the agent's body from the ship ultimately resulted in his death. During the same incident, three Class D personnel had been assigned to clean the engine room. Most of D-12074 was found in a crankshaft, with his legs fused to the ceiling over a meter away from him. D-23574 was fused to a deck plate, and his lower extremities were never located, nor was D-75224, who simply vanished. Other cases have seen personnel molded into solid steel doors while still conscious, or alternatively missing limbs that are incorporated into the structure in other locations of the vessel. Standard operating procedure calls for termination of these victims, as all efforts to sever them from the ship have resulted in death of the affected. Addendum As of the late 1950s, numerous books and eyewitness accounts have surfaced in attempts to shed light on the Navy's failed experiment, further complicating containment procedures. Thanks to the efforts of well-placed field agents, the Foundation has managed to mostly discredit these sources, leaving the experiment as a well-known but officially debunked urban legend. All published accounts have been doctored to indicate DE-173, USS Eldridge, as being the testbed for the experiment, thus drawing attention away from SCP-595. All previous records of the experiment have been successfully obtained, or were destroyed by the United States government. Addendum Attempts to disable the devices located within SCP-595 have all met with failure, as the shutdown procedures documented in Manual 3A require more than the allotted safe margins of time. The use of electromagnetically shielded remote vehicles is currently being investigated. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, Subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.